Hello my friends and welcome to the Heroes of Might and Magic 3 Skills tier list. Uh, this is the third video in the Heroes of Might and Magic 3 tier list series. Uh, the first video I did was all about the creatures in the game, every single creature uh, crammed onto a single tier list, and you can see a link to that in the description below. And then the second video I did was uh, covering all the spells in the game, and I really thought, uh, for completeness sake, it was important that I come back here to tell you all what I think about the secondary skills in the game. So, uh, most of you will be familiar with this idea, you have the four primary skills, attack, defense, um, spell power, and knowledge. And then there are 28, uh, at least in the base game, 28 uh, secondary skills that your heroes can learn, and they can learn up to eight of these uh, particular 28 skills. So similar to the previous videos, I'm going to be working my way through nice and slowly. It's kind of a, the intention is to be a bit of a chillaxing, chilled out uh, experience where I'm going to wax on about the skills, tell you what I think of them, find a spot for them somewhere on this uh, scale. Uh, now, once again, just to reiterate what I've said before in my previous videos, I prefer to play Heroes 3 uh, on the vanilla um, sort of Shadow of Death uh, settings, the sort of build of the game that you'll typically uh, get uh, when you download the game uh, from good old games uh, or from wh whichever vendor you are or installing it from CD or what whatever else you're doing. Um, a little bit about how we're going to uh, rank. So essentially we're looking to put skills that are taken regularly higher up the order and skills that are taken less frequently down the order. That's a loose kind of um, uh, sort of guide rail for how we're going to, to score them. Uh, but then there are going to be specific things that we're taking into account uh, like versatility, um, robustness, the applicability of the skill, how frequently it then uh, shows up, how well it integrates with other skills, how much of a specialist you have to be, uh, for, how, how much of a specialist your hero has to be in order to really get the best out of that skill. Um, now I've shuffled everything around, I'm not doing it alphabetically, Th these are in really no particular order, order at all, and I think that's a good way of keeping the um, mystery and magic alive as we, uh, as we step through the entire list. So we've got about 28 to get through. Probably be a shorter video than the other two were, but I'm not really trying to rush. Uh, I'm going to take my time uh, because these skills are just um, too awesome uh, to, uh, to, 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 to gloss over or rush with. Okay, so quick tweak to my uh, tile size here and we'll get started. First aid is the first skill off the, uh, off the first cab off the rank. And what this does is it allows your uh, first aid tent to work better uh, than it would by default. Uh, and I actually had to look up to remind me how much better it is. It, it adds an additional 50 health of regeneration to the top creature on top for basic first aid, right up to 100 health uh, for expert first aid. So the idea with this is, uh, as it scales in the late game, provided you've got lots of access to first aid tents um, and you're playing a, a faction and or you have access to a faction that has them, um, if you've got tier 7 creatures with 200 HP, uh, the top stack is getting healed by 100 um, in each turn, assuming that it's taken enough damage for that healing to, to trigger. Now, you will almost have always have some damage on your soldiers in any reasonably close fight, uh, or any fight that isn't an absolute gimme. And so I actually find first aid to be pretty good as a skill. Um, it does require you to have access to the tent though. You, you, you need to be able to get a tent and then to buy replacement tents because the tents tend to get destroyed by the AI in particular in, in combat and focus down. Um, I don't know where to start. Usually the first few that I put on the list need, need to then be tweaked afterwards, but I feel like first aid is an okay-ish skill and I'm looking at the B- minus category potentially the C plus category um, for first aid. I, th I think we'll give it a B minus for now. We'll be generous for now because I tend to err on the side of being mean uh, as we go. Next one I've got here is scouting. All right, now scouting uh, is traditionally a skill that I think most, people, most of us probably find to be pretty bad. It takes up one of our eight skill slots and the way Heroes 3 works is that the fog of war once it's revealed, it stays revealed. That, that particular uh, part of the map is revealed permanently, and not only uh, does it not sort of half fade away, you can, you, you can see exactly what's going on with godlike vision for the rest of the game in that part of the map. 
So that makes scouting a really kind of a weird thing where getting out early and revealing that piece of the map in the early part of the game is actually really important. I played a campaign recently, or a, a scenario uh, rather, using uh, Fiona, who is the Cerberus uh, hero from the Inferno, and she has scouting. Um, it's not her specialty, but anyway, I found myself in the early game with her going out on this extra large map, leveling up her scouting all the way up to expert, and it paid huge dividends. Going from scouting radius, whatever the default is, up to plus three additional hexes in all directions, early in the game, is actually really, really good re and really, really powerful. And Fiona did go on to become an important hero uh, in the rest of that campaign. It wasn't like she was a throwaway uh, sort of hero. So uh, before I played that scenario, I actually probably would have given this a D minus. I, I actually think I want to put it up the ranks a little bit. It's not a skill you're going to be especially excited about, but there's such good utility in the early game, on, especially on a large map, um, that I don't think it's junk. I don't think it deserves junk status. So we're going to give it a D minus. Okay. Maybe this will be a short video, because I'm kind of flying here. All right. Uh, the next one I have here is Armorer. And what Armorer does is at the expert level, it reduces all damage incoming to your troops by 15%. It goes 5, 10, 15 at the basic, advanced, and expert level. This is good. Um, as long as you are playing a, um, a hero, as long as your hero is someone who plans to be fighting a lot with, with monsters and creatures... Uh, so it tends to sort of suit the heroes of might a little bit better than the heroes of magic. Um, you get to amplify the impact of your high defense if your hero has a high defense score. Um, but even on heroes that don't have good defense, reducing incoming damage by 15% is just still going to be quite decent. Um, and you can be reasonably happy. Like if you've got no choice but to take this, for example, or it, it gives you this, a choice between this and something garbage, you can take this and be pretty happy. You can be pretty happy. Um, yeah, I think it's a universally robust uh, skill that, you know, interleaves nicely with the other skills. Um, so for armor, I'm going to say C plus-ish. Is it a bit better than that, even? Yeah, I'll put it up towards this end of the C. Is it better than first aid? Yeah, I think it might be slightly better than first aid, actually. Uh, hmm, I might swap these two over. Okay, a little bit of dynamism is required uh, as we go with these. There's there's far fewer than in the other videos. The creatures had like a hundred and something creatures, and we've only got 28 to get through here with the secondary skills. But I think armor is a bit better. I want it a bit more than first aid. I'll tend to take it more frequently than first aid. So I think that's a reasonable swap. Okay, who's next? Leadership is a really good skill. Um... Now, if you are a knight, you have this skill by default, and what it does is it increases the morale of all of your, your troops by uh, plus one, plus two, and then plus three in the case of the expert leadership you can see here. So I had to just go away and remind myself uh, what the impacts of obviously having the positive morale are in terms of percentages, and I don't mind, I'll, I'll shamelessly read them out here. The idea, though, is that by the time you ramp up to uh, expert leadership, if all of, or, or if, if, if your troops, for whatever reason, could be the Glyph of Gallantry, uh, whatever it might be, uh, giving them a plus three morale, that gives all stacks a 12.5% chance to earn a second attack after they've uh, completed their first action for the turn. So they perhaps they move, perhaps they attack, you roll a dice, or a dice is rolled, uh, and 12.5% of the time they get to attack again, which is, is just so awesome uh, and, and, and really, really powerful. And it can really break a break a combat open. Typically, on the flip side, having the enemy uh, enjoy a morale flash is one of the things that you're most worried about. And so, for that reason, morale is is, is really good in this game. Have, having high morale, um, uh, and it's worth even biasing your um, army composition in order to try to stay on the same alignment in order to get the plus one bonus to morale. For that reason, uh, and I often in my games will, will go out of my way to do that. Um, <clears throat> to, to really maximise on morale. So yeah, I really like leadership. Obviously it doesn't work on undead, and there's a bunch of other stuff like golems and things that don't care about it, so it depends on what your hero is doing. Um, Necropolis heroes, I think, are banned from... I don't think they can take this skill, uh, and they're rarely going to want it anyway, I suppose. But overall, yeah, it's a really good skill. It's a really, really solid skill. Um, I think I might give it a B+. Plus. Again, potentially subject to change. 
uh, as we go. Uh, the next one I have here is, a, is the first of School of Magic we'll talk about. It's the School of Air Magic. Now, here's the thing about the schools of magic. There's this thing that happens with magic. I've talked about this a lot in my last video on the spells, where you can only cast one spell per turn. So your hero is going to tend to gravitate towards the most effective spells that really match with his, you know, his, over, his or her overall tactic or, 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 or um, army composition. Being an expert air mage, in the case of uh, air magic here, um, isn't much good if you're also an expert fire mage, expert earth mage, expert water mage. There's not much point in being ex an expert in all four. It's almost always going to be better to take one or two at most. Um, so I guess in terms of ranking this, I'm going to try to rank it in absolute terms. So I'm imagining that you're on you know, week one, week two, you've got maybe a couple of other skills, you're offered air magic, should you take it. Okay. Normally, the answer is going to be yes, because air magic is a really, really solid uh, school. Um, again, if you've got access to good air spells, if you've got a mage guild that's being built, if you are investing in magic <laughs> in general, as opposed to might, maybe, air magics are just a really, really solid choice, a really great um, choice to go into. Um, if you're a you know, a hero of might, you might still go to expert air magic as a priority in order to haste your entire army uh, and be doing that regularly. Uh, you also, you know, get access to cool things in the late game like Dimension Door, uh, which even a hero that doesn't have insane amounts of spell points can still um, get a lot of utility out of, or fly, you know, is another example. Um, how ecstatic am I to see air magic show up? I'm probably about as excited normally as I am to see leadership. Uh, in the early game, in the mid game, yeah, maybe about the same. Um, it's probably not something you're going to desperately try to take in the late game. By that point, you'll already be a mage, you'll already be an expert at something else, and you won't be necessarily looking to to pivot into air magic. Um, yeah, but air magic's a really, really good, really good secondary skill, and one that I'm happy to see show up. Uh, all right, the next one I've got on the list here is luck and. Expert luck increases the luck of, ev of all of your troops by plus three. And I talked in the spells video a little bit about how luck is kind of doesn't quite click together. There's no real luck build where you can cast the fortune spell in the air school and stack it with luck, you know. But I did have a hero in my last campaign that had expert luck, and it kept triggering, and it was really good. It's, it's just it's it's just free damage, right? So it's kind of like blessing your army imagine if you could bless your army but for free it just happens it just goes off for free and you don't actually need to waste a turn um you know you don't need to waste a, waste a spell turn uh, or a casting turn blessing everybody or p casting prayer on everybody if everyone's got expert luck you, you've kind of got it by default um and obviously uh, when the luck triggers you deal uh, excess damage and double damage uh, and so on uh, so it's a little bit like like leadership, except not quite as exciting as leadership. Uh, you can be lucky and be a, a golem or a, um, a vampire, I think, and so it's a bit better than leadership, a bit more versatile in that in, in that context. But I just think in terms of overall wow factor, it's just okay. It's not quite as good as leadership, uh, although it, it shares a sort of a similar vibe. Um, do I like it better than Armourer? Um, yeah, just for the flavour, yes. I think they're similar. I think they're similar, but but luck seems to be, to me, something I'm a little bit happier to see than Armourer. Um, in the round. Okay, let's keep going. Where are we up to? How's this looking? I'll just check the check how the image is coming through for you guys on the, on the screen. All right, the next one I've got here is Artillery. And what this does is it improves the power level of the ballista. Uh, obviously, you really need early ac early access to a ballista. Like when you give your hero this skill by choice, you need a ballista ready to be purchased, and they're expensive. They're two and a half grand for a ballista. Some heroes come with a ballista for free as part of their you know uh, setup when they arrive. And there's one hero I think Christian in the. Uh, castle town who has both he starts with artillery and and a ballista to shoot with so he's kind of a pre-cooked ready to go artillery guy and the ballista is really really good it does help to have high attack strength 
uh, for your hero to have high attack strength to really get the most out of it. Uh, but dealing the double damage uh, with two shots, you know, um, uh, with a ranged attack, again, for free, in addition to whatever else the rest of your army is doing, is pretty good. The Ballista as well is really quite hard to destroy uh, right the way through the early and mid-game, uh, even though the AI will often attack it, um, it'll usually survive. It's quite, it's actually quite hard to destroy. Um, now, it does require a lot of setup, and you have to forego other things, you know, and you've got to, you've, you've kind of got to be married to this idea of having the ballista and for it mattering. And it is capped, obviously, in terms of it can't scale. It can't, it can't scale to bonkers levels of damage, you know, the way that something like expert, um, it being an expert air mage with chain lightning can. Um, where do I want to be? I think I want to be in the C category for artillery. And I think I like first aid just that little bit better. Uh, not, it's, it's, not, it's not a massive difference, but just a little bit better than I like artillery. Uh, solid skill, though, and uh, provided you've got the right um, ability to leverage it early in the game, can be very, very strong. Okay, uh, next thing I've got here is mysticism. And I don't really like mysticism. Okay, so the idea with this is that you get free extra spell points regenerated each day, so by default each hero only gains one spell point per day. Now the way to break that is to spend the night uh, in uh, your town, where your mage guild is. Uh, you can also uh, visit the Mana Vortex in, in the dungeon, if you have that. And then there's the Wishing Wells all the way through the adventure map. Um, I tend to find it's usually the case that you're going to be able to do one of those other things, especially the wishing well. Like, if there's a wishing well anywhere in your regular part of your empire, back and forth as you're moving troops around and exploring different parts or whatever, even one or two wishing wells on the map near where you are completely invalidates mysticism. So it can be actually quite handy if you've got a hero who you've sent off early and, and, and they're off exploring and they're in a area that's got really bad terrain and they're moving slowly and chonkily through the terrain revealing new bits of open terrain with no roads having mysticism actually can be quite handy for them if, if they're strong enough to defeat the wandering monsters that are nearby and they're actually engaging in fights casting spells casting blind for example and then yeah within a couple of days expert mysticism i've earned those spell points back um but it's a bit corner casey it's a bit corner casey and i think it's probably the worst spell we've seen so, uh, the worst skill, sorry, that we've seen so far. Is it an E? Mysticism? I'm just scanning here on the, some of these others, or what I'm gonna, who, who am I going to make Fs and Es and everything? It's pretty bad, right? It's, it's a pretty bad skill to get. I'm not going to condemn it to E just yet, but I might have to if we come back. Alright, what, 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 what's next here? Tactics. Tactics is cool. It means that every single combat, before combat begins, you get to configure your army, uh, put your vulnerable squishy units behind your strong uh, chunky units, uh, and or, in a, if, you, if you're playing in a very offensive strategy, move everybody forward, five or six squares, whatever it is, and then uh, if you've got the first turn, you're able to leap on the defenders uh, that much faster. So it's an extremely valuable skill, much, much more useful for heroes of might that are really fighting with big armies where you've poured you know effort and energy into making them really strong in terms of attack and defense and you've poured money into having uh, really good armies with seven stacks of really meaningful troops and not just you know not just our uh, tokens uh, or tiny stacks of troops in in in, in the seven um tactics generally is going to be a, a pretty premier choice for heroes of might um, I'm taking it most of the time. You know, if I've got Crag Hack or something and I see Tactics, yeah. I think it's an A-grade skill. Uh, it's better than Leadership most of the time. I'm going to give it a low A. And we might come back and promote it a bit higher even. It's a, it's a really, really good uh, skill to get, and I prioritise it pretty highly. More than I would prioritise these other ones. So I'm going to give it an A uh, for now. Okay. Uh, the next one's a tough one to rank. So this is Wisdom. Okay, so with Wisdom you've got Heroes of Might and Heroes of Magic. The idea, broadly broadly speaking, is that, and there are some exceptions, I think, 
uh, that the heroes of magic start with basic wisdom. The heroes of might can then choose to take basic wisdom as a skill further down the tree. And the idea being that uh, if you have basic wisdom, you can learn spells uh, that are level three, and then advanced wisdom allows you to learn level four. Expert wisdom allows you to learn level five. Uh, so what we talked about before, the idea of an air mage, uh, someone taking basic uh, air magic, the idea is you could become an expert in that spe in that school as a hero of might, but never bother to, to get wisdom, and simply use the level one, two, and three air spells, uh, and just have a great time with expert haste, uh, lightning bolt. You might do um, disrupting ray, um, that kind of thing. Visions. Uh, there's, there's there's interesting utility spells in in air that you might use without ever bothering to become capable of casting the really powerful stuff like Chain Lightning and Dimension Door. Um, so how do we rank this? Like you, you can't actually give it a score in the context of a hero of magic because they come with it by default. They have no choice. They can't choose it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to rank Wisdom on a scale of S to F based on whether as a hero of might I end up tending to take it. The answer is I don't take it that often, but I sometimes do, right? It's not an absolute no-brainer. It's like, oh, yes, wisdom. Great, crag hack, I can give him wisdom. Yeah, you're probably saying no to wisdom in the early game. In fact, you're almost certainly saying no to wisdom in the, in the early game a lot of the time. Like, imagine being offered luck or wisdom on, on, a, on a hero of might, right? So later in the game, if you've got access to really good... Um, spells in your mage guild, uh, being able to send your powerful hero of might in there to learn them, it, it switches on and it's something you then care about. So I think I'm going to leave it right parked bang in the middle <laughs> of our tier list. Um, just to reflect that, it's a strange one, right? Half the, half the heroes in the game already have it. <laughs> so for them, it's actually very, extremely special and important, like because it's integral to what they're doing. But in the context of someone who is given the choice of choosing wisdom, it's probably not actually... I'm going to even demote it a little bit. It's just okay, right? If you don't already have it, what is the probability that you're really dying to get it? Ah, look, I'll put it back here. I'll put it back in the middle. Tuffy. Next, we have fire magic, or the school of fire. I don't know, what's it called? Fire magic is the secondary skill. Uh, similar to what we talked about with air magic, so this uh, this unlocks all of the um, expert features inside the fire school. Now, spoiler alert for those of you who haven't seen the spells tier list, uh, I think fire is the worst school. Um, and there isn't a huge amount of point becoming an expert fire mage. It allows you, a hero of might will be able to cast expert curse and expert bloodlust at quite a high proficiency and, and usefulness. You can ignore wisdom and just cast those two spells at expert level. You'll also get a discount on blind, which is a key spell you'll be casting a lot as a fire mage. Um, but it's a key spell you'll be casting a lot anyway, regardless of whether you take this choice. Um, now, as for a hero of magic, you know, if I'm being an expert fire mage, I've got to try to get utility out of awkward things like you know, sacrifice. Um, it can obviously be a massive thing if I am building towards Armageddon. Um, and you can get make like the Tome of Fire Magic to deal additional 50% damage. You can, you can have this idea I'm building around this. I really want to be an expert Fire Mage with really high spell power. But most heroes that come across Fire Magic are probably going to pick something else, I think. They're going to maybe hold Fire and say, no, I don't want to be an expert Fire Mage. I'm going to hold that See if I can pick up water or, or earth instead, or, or air. Um, now, with that said, this icon that we're looking at is the coolest icon of all of the skills. It just looks so awesome. There's the flaming globe and everything. I just think it's the coolest icon in, in the, out of all of the icons. Um, and I probably take Expert Fire Magic just because of how cool it looks. Even though it doesn't look like that, it looks like it, there's a basic version with a different icon that you take at the beginning. Um... A school of magic is, is, is something, you know, it's better than scouting, um, but uh, it's, it's not the school you're going to want to go into very often. You, you, you're usually going to want to be in, diff in a different school, um, or at least another school in addition to it. Um, 
yeah, in terms of incidentally when it shows up, how often do I want to pile into it? Not that often, right? I, I, I can cast blind. I don't need to be proficient. I don't need to have expertise in the school to, to, to cast that spell. C minus for now? Mm. Yeah, I'm going to pop it down here. C, C minus ish. Uh, despite how cool it looks. All right, resistance. Um, now, in various, like in the community patch of the game uh, and in competitive play, this skill is often banned, I think. Uh, in the Shadow of Death default game, as, you, as it comes, as you play it, uh, I've always found it to be just good, but not broken. Um, at the expert level, it gives you a 20% chance to resist uh, the impact of incoming spells. Uh, so all of your soldiers, for example, if your opponent is going to cast Lightning Bolt on one of your stacks, if you've got expert resistance, there's a 20% chance uh, that the spell doesn't work. Um, and I have just always found it to be pretty good, like just a, an okay skill. I, I, I haven't found it to be utterly busted or broken, like a beeline, oh, like, yes, resistance, I can't wait to take this. Um, it's just okay. It's just okay. I mean, it doesn't help you against... Wandering monsters when you're trying to unlock the map. It's 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 more of a late game thing where, you know, enemy uh, heroes that are you know, who built their strategy around high damage um, magic spells have a harder time um, getting their message across. But twenty percent isn't fifty percent, right? It's not like it, it's not it's not busted. I I just think it's a handy handy skill and one that I'm happy to pick up and handy to level up into. The, I'm happy sorry ha happy to pick up happy to level up into the expert level. So it's like 5% resistance to start with, 10% for advanced, and then at expert level, you get 20%. Um, yeah, well, maybe it's a bit better than being able to resist. Yeah. I'm going to leave it here, B+. Plus. I think I actually like leadership a bit more than I like this, um, when, typically when I play the game. Um, see what you guys think of that, actually. I mean, those of you who play the community patch version maybe um, can shed some light on uh, on the rationale behind how it and why it got banned. Um, for me, though, it's, it's never been busted. Anyway, I've talked about it long enough. Okay, how are we, how are we doing? How are my levels? Coming through all right? Okay, hopefully this picture looks, looks all right for you guys. Next on the uh, rank is Ballistics. This improves the performance of the catapult when you are attacking a town. Um, now, there are lots and lots of heroes and army compositions and builds and games where you're going to find yourself wanting to capture a town, having a big army, but not really being able to deal with the fact that there's a big wall and a big moat and the three archery towers uh, that come with um, uh, the defense of the town. Um... That happens all the time. Even in a situation where you have good flyers in your army and you've got maybe some ranged units in your army, uh, it, can, it will often be the case you've got at least some aspects of your army that are just ground guys, like minotaurs or... Uh, like Dungeon is a classic example of this, right? Because you've got the harpy hags, medusas, beholders, uh, manticores and dragons, all of which can either shoot through the walls or walk up and, and get shorter range and shoot through the walls or fly over them. And I, it's always the manticores who are just... Uh, not manticores, it's the, um, the uh, minotaurs. It's always the minotaurs who are just like, man, I don't get to play. I can't... Like, I just have to sit around while you got, the rest of the army does all the work uh, and wait, hopefully, for maybe some defenders to walk out of the gate or for eventually the catapult to breach one of the sections of wall. Even in army composition builds like that... You, you can still be pretty happy with ballistics. Um, being able to take out one of the uh, arrow towers, especially the big arrow tower, in the first couple of turns of the game, if you do need to get a little bit lucky, it's not guaranteed. Firing two shots at that ta at that arrow tower could save your, you know, you could save yourself lots and lots of losses uh, from your most spongy unit. Um, say, for example, the beholders in that exa example I gave you there, or the harpy hags. Um, ballistics will still pull its weight, is what I'm saying. Um, and for that reason, I think it's amazing. It's not an auto-pick. Well, in the early game, it's an auto-pick. I, I can be very happy just taking it. Um, in the late game, I might still quite often be looking for it and wanting it. 
so I think it's a special skill, ballistics. It's really, really good. It just gives you. It just means you can relax. You know, I don't have to worry too much anymore. I can have a big army full of ground guys, and if I've got expert ballistics, then I'm going to be okay. It's going to be all right. You know, I can I can attack any town I come across with confidence, without having to have a plan for oh, you know, or invest in flyers, which you know are often less uh, less powerful um, pound for pound than their ground moving counterparts. Um, ballistics is a special skill. Is that right? Yeah, ballistics is special. I'm going to say that. Okay. Ballistics is special. All right, let's keep going. I've got necromancy next. Um, necromancy is very hard to rate because you can't choose it. Uh, all of the necropolis heroes have it and or start with it, sorry, and then everyone else is banned from learning it. Uh, you don't get offered it when you level up. I think there's ways you can accidentally learn it, like from a scholar and stuff. That's, uh, so it's a really, really hard skill to rate. It's a very important and useful skill for the Necropolis heroes. Um, and so I'm not going to overthink it. I'm just going to say that it's very good. Um, I'm just going to say that it's very good, but I'm, I'm not putting... It's not special because you don't always end up building your strategy around it as a necropolis hero. Um, so, does it deserve an... I'm going to give it just a good B+, plus, which I've done with a lot of stuff in this category of like, yeah, it's good, but there's an asterisk because of the context. So I had Archangels, and I was talking about uh, spells like Animate Dead and stuff in the last video, where it's kind of like, yeah, of course, they're amazing, but in the context of what we're trying to do, we're trying to rank them... We're trying to rank these skills in terms of desirability when you're offered them. And you're never offered this. <laughs> yeah, so I've got to put it somewhere. I think for the Necropolis heroes, it's a it's a pivotal and important skill, but not necessarily up here because you aren't just beelining your strategy towards necromancy. Uh, at least not every time. Um, I just realized how many skulls there are in these diagrams. There's, there's, there's tons more as well. Um, Next skill I've got here is Scholar, and the idea being with this that at expert level you can learn and teach fourth level spells to uh, other heroes in your army or in your empire. Very useful if you've got a big sprawling empire, and then quite uh, a combo in the late game if you have Town Portal on one of your more important heroes. Town Portaling around, teaching the entire empire how to cast uh, Town Portal. <laughs> Uh, can be quite 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 good. Um, even in the early game, though, Scholar can be quite handy. One thing I do find, it has massively diminishing returns. You really only want one hero to be a Scholar, uh, and you don't really want a second Scholar in your in your in your roster that much. Um, so I'll pick it. I'll be happy, but I won't be. I won't be ecstatic about being a Scholar if I get offered that. Yeah, it's just a C being a Scholar. I think it's okay. All right. Next is offense, and what this does at expert level is it increases the hand-to-hand -hand damage uh, that all of your troops deal by thirty percent. So you really want a good-sized army, and you want a hero that is doing a lot of fighting. It does help if he has a high attack strength, but if he's a more defensively minded, if, if the army is more defensively minded, and he has a high defense skill, perhaps through an artifact or something, growing expert offense is still going to be useful even then. Because 30% is 30%. It takes whatever you would have dealt and multiplies it by 1.3. Um, and you can't win fights as a big hero of might with a big mighty army without actually dealing damage. Um, so the offense is always going to be good. I think it might be a little bit better than armorer, right? It's it's obviously it's obvious to compare it to armorer for for, for that perp, for that that reason that armorer does the opposite thing. Um, it gives a higher buff than the armorer gives, but that's because armorer affects all types of damage. Um, this is just hand-to-hand -hand damage. Um, how excited am I to get it? I think it's a high B. I think it's probably in this region here. Kind of like resistance and leadership. Um, yeah, I like I like offense. I like picking it. I go out of my way to pick it. I might just promote leadership a little bit here uh, as well. And we'll just do a little rejig of the uh, graphics. I don't need to bunch them in too close together because we don't have that many to get through. Um, 
yeah, offense is a solid, solid skill when you can be happy picking up. I don't think it's an auto pick. I don't think it's really, really A grade, A grade, but it's it's good. All right. Next skill I have is logistics, and this increases your uh, movement over land um, and in the underground. Just uh, extends the reach that your hero has on a given day, uh, given their army composition and giving the other whatever other modifiers are there. And in the vanilla game, this is just awesome. Every single day, being able to do that much more with your hero opens up all these additional strategic options that you didn't have before, like being able to concertina your run with, you know, and meeting up and, and exchanging troops and, and uh, artifacts with other heroes, uh, racing down to sort out a, a problem and then racing back again to solve a different problem the next day. There's just so many ways that logistics pays you back every single turn. Um, even on a small-ish or medium-sized map, this is going to be great. On a big map, though, on a larger, extra-large map, which is the maps I prefer to and tend to play, this is an auto-pick. It is just great. Um, I'm going to do a spoiler alert. There's no better skill in the game than logistics, in my opinion. It's just... It's, 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 it's awesome. And there's just no hero who doesn't want it. Um... And I yeah, can't get enough of it. Logistics. I don't even. I can't even tell you off the top of my head how far, uh, how much further you get to uh, run. You get ten percent additional movement at basic, twenty, and then thirty at expert. Um, yeah. Uh, look, it's just it. It pays you back in so many important and subtle ways every single day. Being able to move an additional thirty um, percent. Yeah, just just awesome. Can't speak highly enough of it. Um, maybe I'll come back and wax on about how amazing it is again at the end. Uh, I d there's no better skill, I'm saying. Um, now, the next thing I've got here to talk about is archery. And this one is an interesting one. Uh, basic archery is really useless. It gives you a plus 10%. Um, it gives you a plus 10% uh, damage uh, from your ranged uh, guys. But then it goes to 25 and then 50%. Uh, at expert level, so all of your ranged troops deal 50% more damage. That can be extremely good, and uh, if you've got lots of ranged units in your army, that is, and you're able to build towards it, very, very powerful. Um, I think it's probably still only a B, because you have to build towards it. Uh, when you're starting with a hero that has it by default, it'll be easier to really prioritise ranged units and max out that the, the, the value of it. Later in the game, as the game wanes on and waxes on, you will have made a call, and you'll be perhaps you'll be you'll already be hasting, flying, offensing, you know, tacticsing, uh, and it'll show up, and you'll be like, "Oh, archering! Well, it's a bit late for that now. I don't really have enough ranged dudes. I I can't pivot easily into this." Um, and then certain certain town types that just love it, right? The dungeon loves it. The the tower probably loves it. Um, yeah, it's a kind of a hard. It's it's a good skill, um, but there are going to be times where it's offered to you and you're like, oh no, jeez, hell no. <laughs> and for some reason, it's smaller than the other icons. I don't know why. Um, where do I want to put it? I'm not really sure. It's not an A grade skill. I think it's there. But you could swap, you could swap, take any of these four and sort of swap them around a little bit, and I'd be in agreement. You know, I'm not saying that this is the right order of these four, really. Leadership and necromancy are a little bit better than these four, but archery could be, could be a bit higher than this. I think it's okay there, though, for now. All right, let's keep going. Uh, how are we doing? We're doing okay. Expert water magic. Well, water magic as a skill. Is it worth going into the school of water? Um, yes, it is. Uh, I think it's a B minus. I like the water school. I'll take it. I'll take it if even if I've already got some one one of the other schools. I'll still take water sometimes. Um, it doesn't quite get me super excited the way air does by default. So if I've got a default hero wandering around doing things, wasn't expecting this, oh, here I am, offered water. How much more excited, air or water, how much more excited? I'm a little bit more excited to be offered air, usually. 
Uh, and often that's because of Lightning Bolt. Like, because it's a utility hero, they're never going to be an incredible spellcaster, but, you know, um, you know, they'll know Bless, though, a lot of the time, and that kind of thing. Becoming an expert water mage, if you're a hero of might, is sometimes better because of Bless. Air and water, maybe I'll just promote it a little bit. I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's a bit worse than being a water expert. Sorry, it's gonna it's a bit worse than being an air mage, in the round by default over time, um, that kind of thing. I, I don't I certainly don't hate it, uh, and there's gonna be times and cases and examples where water is a way better choice for you than air, depending on what's in your mage guild, um, and uh, the monsters you're facing. Actually, in my last campaign, I intentionally took water magic on one of my heroes to learn forgetfulness, expert forgetfulness, and that allowed me to unlock a Pandora's box that I wouldn't have been able to access with any other means. Uh, I didn't have any other means of, of taking that fight down uh, without expert forgetfulness. Uh, or none that I could think of, anyway, with the resources I had uh, to hand. Expert learning, or the learning skill, this increases your, every time you earn experience, you earn 5% more experience. Uh, learning's quite bad because certainly in the late game you never want to take it. In the mid game you don't want to take it. In the very early, like let's say it's offered to you on day two, it's it's got to be if you're never taking it in the first, you know, if you're never taking it in the late game, you're never taking it in the mid game because it's just always going to be worth it to take something else. Like it chews up one of your eight slots, right? So. In the early game, it better be awesome. It better be your absolute, oh my god, yes, learning. Now's the time. Day two, day three, I desperately want it. Well, guess what? A lot of the time you're going to see tactics and you're going to take that instead. Or you're going to see offense and be like, oh, no, no, offense is going to pay divs. I'm taking offense. Learning, I, you know, I, yeah, I would have taken learning, but I found offense instead. So in the round overall, by the time you weigh up and do a weighted average of all of the times you're ever offered learning, it's almost always something you don't want. Um, so we're down in the and the, the book the book uh, artwork actually these guys are kind of have nothing to do with each other but they're kind of cousins in terms of how how excited you are about them. I think it's an E. I'm going to give learning an E, just because if you take it on in week one, it will pay you back. Like it feels like it does pay you back over time. Although sometimes the impact can be hard to measure. You forget you guys got it, you know, and then you look across all of your heroes and this particular guy has leveled up. Maybe he's got one more level than he would have had. I don't know, maybe it's not even that good. Maybe I'm saying that it's good in the early game, but it's actually not even good in the early game. So I don't know, how bad is learning? What do you guys think? Should it be just an F? Is it a straight F? Uh, or is it good enough to still be playable and takeable on, on in week one? I do take it, but I've never really done the maths. And I've never really thought about thought hard about whether I'm getting enough value out of it. But it, in the round, it's definitely an E, just because of its uselessness in the late game. Um, this next one here is Navigation. Um, okay, there are some maps that have no water, where this is beyond F. On the assumption that you have a reasonable amount of water, um, Navigation can be quite good. If you can get your guy out on a boat, or get your nav navigator out on a boat, quickly uh, sw uh, sail around, reveal the map, kind of pairs nicely with scouting on a specific heroes that in the early game you have both of these skills. You can mop up all the flotsam and bonuses that are out on the ocean before the other uh, heroes, enemy heroes do. Okay, but generally speaking, it's not a skill I'm going to take very often. Um, in the mid game and late game, really not taking this. Um, early on, it can be a backbreaking thing to take though. Early on, it's be like, oh yes, navigation, awesome. Because I was about to jump in, I, I need someone to jump in the water and go do stuff. I'm just going to give it a D plus. I think it's okay in the round. There's going to be lots of time it's offered to you though, where you're just like, oh my god, no, I don't. Please no, you must be joking. But it's better than these other two things here, All right? Okay, happy with that. We need to make some. Um, <laughs> We need to make some sweeping uh, decisions uh, in order to keep the uh, keep things moving. Uh, next skill I have here is Earth Magic, so becoming a e expert Earth Mage. Uh, as a hero of might who's offered this in the mid or late game, uh, it can be really handy because you can learn how to cast Expert slow, and as we talked about in the previous 
video uh, slow is one of the greatest um, things you can be doing at expert uh, at an expert proficiency anyway. But where this really shines, of course, is the heroes of magic who have access to uh, wisdom and can unlock all the incredible uh, level four and level five spells: town portal, resurrection. Um, there's animate dead. There's um, did I say town portal? Um, <laughs> there's implosion, right? <laughs> uh, which really come on, really come into their own if you have the expertise to really get the most out of them uh, with expert earth magic. Um, I'm almost always taking it uh, in the early game when offered it with just about any hero for, the, for, for those reasons. For a hero of might, I might turn it down though. I'm probably going to turn it down in favour of one of these other cool things instead. Um, but because it unlocks the most bonkers spells in the games in the late game, because it has good utility for heroes of might as well, it's better. It's just better than this. It just you're going to take it more often. I think it's a special skill, uh, just because of how special earth magic is. Um, I'm going to say, is it special or is it top of the A? I think ballistics deserves a promotion above it because of its universal appeal, universal awesomeness. No one's competing with logistics in a million years. I'm just spoiler alerting that right now. Um, yeah, I'm going to give it an S tier just because of the insanity of the School of Earth, how great Earth is. Um, in, if a hero of might who takes this might find themselves in the late game intentionally then taking wisdom in order to unlock those other spells that go with. Like, it's just so good. It's such an important part of the game. Expert slow is just such a pivotal, pivotal thing in the game, uh, aside from all the other stuff. You can also do expert shield, I should point out, an expert stone skin uh, for heroes of might also quite good utility out of those uh, th those spells as well. Um, I'm looking at these five or six here and thinking I might want to promote or demote one of them. Sorry, promote one of them into A. I don't know yet. Um, let's keep moving. Intelligence. Um, what this does is it increases the amount of spell points you have, given your knowledge. So the idea is, that the, the logic of Heroes 3 is that if you have a certain level of knowledge, that allows you to cast a certain number of spells before becoming exhausted or running out of mana. If you're also intelligent, that's, that, that stacks and scales. So if you've got expert intelligence, you have twice as many spell points uh, as someone who is unintelligent, but who has the same amount of knowledge. And then the word wisdom is used to refer to people who are able to learn more complicated spells than those who aren't. So interesting way that the words knowledge, wisdom, and intelligence kind of get kind of get used and you almost feel like you could take all three words and randomly change what they mean and swap them around and the game would still work just fine. Um, I haven't thought about it in, in, in much depth, but intelligence actually does pay pretty good dividends. You can um, get to a point where if you've got knowledge 10 in the mid-game, well, that's 100 spell points. Well, expert intelligence, that's 200 spell points and all of a sudden you've got tons more options. You can do really expensive broken things and not worry too much about how much mana it's costing you. So really high casting cost spells like Chain Lightning. Uh, if you want to try and cast that a couple of times in a combat, well, you're going to exhaust yourself, right? You're going to need to find a Wishing Well uh, after a single combat if you cast that twice. Um, intelligence means that you can just last longer before having to get back to town and whatever. Um, there is an interaction with the Mana Vortex as well, a similar thing to the Mysticism, right? If you if you have access to the dungeon, you can be Expert Intelligence and Mana, mana Vortex, which... Uh, just is bonkers and, and gives you huge amounts of uh, spell points, more than you can ever ever want. Um, how excited am I to get it? Well, as a hero of might, I'm not very excited to get it. I don't tend to take it with heroes of might. Heroes of magic, I'll prioritise it pretty highly. Um, I think it's a good skill. It's probably in the same conversation as armourer and luck, uh, somewhere in this vicinity here. A lot of bees, aren't there? But... That's, I, I, I don't premeditate on these. I just start the rankings uh, when I p hit the record button. and This is how I feel. I think intelligence is solid. It's a solid skill. Uh, better than these other things in the C category here. Okay. Um, now, related to intelligence, um, and something that heroes that have intelligence will sometimes also have here, is sorcery. Sorcery is a really narrow skill that it only... What it does is it increases the damage dealt by your direct damage spell. So when you cast a magic arrow, 
Sorcery adds more damage on. How much damage, you ask? Is it 50%? No. Okay, no, no, it's not 50%. It's 15% at expert level. Now, 15%, if you think about it this way, if you have spell power of... A typical spell is going to scale with your spell power. So if you've got spell power 12, um, by having expert sorcery, that will increase the damage you deal as though your spell power was 14, you know, or 13 and a half. It's just not that amazing. There are so many artifacts in the game that just give you plus two spell power that you're just kind of throwing away and so saying, I can't wait to replace this artifact. It's not very good. Um, so... Is this worth it? Is it worth taking this? Even for someone who is doing running around the map doing implosions everywhere. Expert Sorcery, you could just take something else. Like, you could take Expert Armorer to just make your guys last longer, or Expert Luck, or you could give yourself Intelligence, you could make yourself a Scholar, do First Aid. Um, it's just more useful things you could be doing. So I don't think Sorcery is worth taking. And um, I don't know if I want to give it an F. Um... But I think it's worse than learning. I think it's a bit worse than learning. I don't actually have, yeah, anything I really want to. I'm not going to put. I'm not going to put this in the F. I think it's. Uh, I think it's just an E. If you have it, 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 it will eventually pay some dividends, right? Magic arrowing your way through the early game yeah, with some expert sorcery. Oh, so that's okay, but it's not very good. There's all these other cool things you'd be doing instead. So that's that. That's how I feel about that. All right. Um, pathfinding. Pathfinding uh, removes the penalty eventually, well, by the time you're an expert, removes the penalty for moving over snow and marshy ground and rocky terrain and stuff like that. Uh, now this is kind of like a poor man's logistics, but it is still really good. You know, I've had lots of heroes on large maps or ex um, ex extra large maps that have logistics and then are offered pathfinding later, and I take the pathfinding. Because logistics does increase your movement by thirty percent, but it doesn't it doesn't um, help you in particular over rough terrain. It just gives you thirty percent more than you would have had by having both of these together. You can have a hero that can just traverse acres of space in a single turn. Uh, I'm not looking to get both of these skills together on a hero that is going to then be town portaling, dimension door, and fly and that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, there's a specific hero who wants both. Quite often it can be the case, though, that you're just not offered logistics, but at some point at level 4 or 5 or 6, you're offered pathfinding, and, yeah, you're doing a lot of exploring, and you're on areas that aren't grass. You know, there's rocky, barren or terrain, or the uh, whatever. Uh, there's the lava terrain of the Inferno, all of which will penalise your movement to walk around on it. Uh, the swamp, I think, is the worst of the worst, though. Um, and having pathfinding really, really helps if you're, if you're stuck uh, in, swamp, in a swamp area. Um, so yeah, great utility out of this spell, but it's probably in the same conversation as the bees. I think I want to promote leadership. I'm going to give leadership a small promotion, and that will allow us to just pop pathfinding in amongst these really good high B plus things. I think leadership is just that little bit cut above this other cadre of, uh, of skills. All of which I'm happy with, all of which are paying dividends. I'm, I'm a good leadership's just that little bit better, right? Just that little bit better. Uh, okay. Next we have estates. And being ex an expert estates gives you 500 bucks a day uh, if, from the hero. The hero just prints you 500 bucks a day. It's like having a whole other town. Um, you know, like if you have an upgrade, if you have a town that has a, um, like just a town hall in it, what, what does it do? It goes, it goes town hall. There's village hall, town hall, city hall. So I think it might be the village hall I'm thinking of. A, a, a town that has a village hall gives you 500 bucks a day. So having this hero is just like having a whole other town in terms of income. They cost 2,500 gold to, to hire a hero. This guy will pay for himself in the first five days if he's an expert, he or she. It's 125 gold a day for basic, 250 for advanced, and then 500 for expert. This skill is great. It's just awesome. Even like you can be really precious and say, "Oh no, this is my this is my premier hero. I need to optimize every single eight uh, skills. Have to be perfectly chosen. I'm going to be an expert earth and air, and I'm going to take logistics, and I'm going to wait until I get ballistics, and I'm going to get the. I'm going to... 
yeah, or you might just find, actually, a lot of the time, forget that. But if estates is on the table, take it. It's just, it's free money. It's just, it's so it's such a good amount of money. It would be different if it was 50 bucks a day or 100 bucks a day. And, you know, it's going to help you in the you know grind in the early and mid game. It'd be down in this area here, right? 500 bucks a day. You cannot sneeze at that. Is it special? No, I'm going to say it's it's A. It's A+. Plus. It's a skill you just take. Yeah, I want it. But I want these more, right? These are special, these three. They, they really are. But Estates is an A-grade A grade skill. Just for the sheer amount of money um, and advantage. Like you can just do more stuff. You've got more cash and unlocks, unlocks more uh, options for you in the game. Okay, uh, two to go. I've got here, the next one is Eagle Eye. So what Eagle Eye does is allows your hero to learn a spell that is being cast by someone he's fighting. Um, now, at expert level, you get a... Let me just check exactly what the percentages are here. You get a... Uh, at expert level, you get a 60% chance to learn spells of level 4 and below. So a few things need to go right here. You need... Um, firstly, you need a... A fight to be happening between yourself and an enemy hero and for the fight to be going on long enough for the hero to cast uh, a spell. Um, the second thing is it needs to be a spell that you don't know already or that you're not going to easily be able to learn in, in due course. Okay, and then finally you also need to pass the 60% threshold. There's a 40% chance you won't learn it uh, when that happens. So it's a bit situational. Uh, but of course, because it does give you that extra spell, it's obviously quite special indeed. I think we can probably uh, we can probably put it up here. Well, we put it put it, put it sort of up here. It's sort of the second best skill in the game, I think. Eagle Eye, um, getting to learn spells for free off enemy heroes is is, is, is a pretty special sort of um, sort of idea, I think. Um, finally, we have diplomacy, and here's the thing with diplomacy: if you're a beginner at the game. You want to take diplomacy every time. Diplomacy is really um, just completely broken. Like when you attack a group of wandering monsters, if they would flee, instead they join your army. And this is just so busted. Like it just completely destroys the game. Uh, and I am aware that in the community patch version of the game, the Horn of the Abyss and so on, diplomacy is more or less switched off or nerfed or uh, pr pr profoundly changed. So in the vanilla game, when I'm playing the vanilla game, if I'm offered diplomacy, I just don't take it because it really just ruins the game and it makes the hero, you know, you just you find yourself with a wandering pack of you know, 70 unicorns that long, long for greater glory and join your army and you're just like, hell yeah! But then the game just feels easy after that. It's just, it, it just breaks the game in half. So I'm actually going to uh, put diplomacy in the... It's, it's kind of, it's not an F, but it's unrated. You can think of it like, I'm just leaving it down here because it, it doesn't get a rating because it kind of isn't really part of the game. Um, at least in the version of the game that I play. So, so that's it. Um, that's my list. I'm not going to do condensing and piling everything in together. I think I'm happy to just leave the map the way it is. Uh, shorter video, I think, probably than the other two were, but for completeness now, we have done all the secondary skills. Uh, so, look, um, big payoff for me is uh, jamming with you guys, engaging in the comments, especially those of you who violently disagree with me. Um, that's the whole point of this, is to get some cool dialogue going. So, uh, tell me what you think, uh, and I've asked a couple of questions through there, I won't repeat them, just about clarifying how how, how valuable uh, these skills are uh, to each of you guys uh, in the version of the game that you play. Let me know what you think. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed, and uh, I'll see you again soon for the next one. Bye for now. Oh, wait, no! Eagle Eye is terrible!